Hi, I'm Dennis with TheGarageEngineer.com and today we're going to be working on our 1968 Evinrude 3 horsepower outboard motor which will be going with our dinghy project which if you haven't seen that video after you watch this one go back and watch the dinghy build it's very interesting. Today we're going to be working on a, the pull start which I think is a little short so we're going to be replacing that. Um, it's not that bad but it's a pretty interesting teardown and a repair. So sit back and take a watch. I got this Evinrude 3 horsepower uh, outboard motor for the two piece of plywood uh, build and uh, I bought this. Guy was asking for 130 uh, when I got there looked at it. It's missing the handle. Um, when I was trying to do the pull start it was very tight. Um, so I don't know uh, what's going on. I said well what's the what are you looking to get out of it? He said 100 and I still has a little bit more than since not knowing he didn't know the condition of it he said he got it in a package deal with another motor and just didn't have time to work on it which could be bad or good I mean he probably knows what could have been wrong with it but I said I'll give you $75 and he took it right away so I probably should have asked for less but 75 is good um, so we're just basing off this we don't really know what's going on I did pressure wash it there's bad fuel in here, so I'm hoping it was just carb. It needs to be cleaned, but fuel has been leaking out here, uh, so there's definitely bad fuel. I dumped that out. Before we do anything, um, I want to replace the uh, pull cord. It's old and hard. I've got some new cord, and uh, we're going to change the uh, lower gear oil to. Uh, or see if it's even got some in there or not so I don't know we'll have to get into that check that out and it looks like this is missing a bolt so I put one there so not sure we'll take a look at it and we'll go from there all right so to get to the pull cord we're gonna get these top screws off here there's one missing so we'll have to get that replaced uh, so we'll figure that out So we'll get that apart. Let's just put it on the bench and we'll get it apart. The manual for the pull cord here is 5 seconds and it's 70 and a half inches long. Uh, I just went to Home Depot, got regular nylon cord. Um, they don't have 5 seconds, they have 3 sixteenths. So, I mean, it's this is a lot cheaper per foot than going out and buying the whole thing, even though. This handle is pretty is pretty dry rotted. Uh, we'll probably end up having to get a new one, but uh, I just wanted to, I just went with that instead of buying a pre-made um, whole kit. So uh, they did sell some five thirty second diameter, but it was for clotheslines. This is a ninety pound working load, so it was a little bit stronger. So that's why I went with that. But first, let's get t uh, get you a little closer and take a look at the inside of this. All right, so we're gonna take part of the uh, the e-clip right here that holds everything together and pop that off without poking myself there you go and then we will get this retainer spring off without it flying everywhere there you go and you just have clips there. Next, I think we need to get the screw out of here. Let me go get that. All right, so now we're going to remove the bolt, the lock washer, from the center pulley here. the washer okay all 
There you go. There's a spring in there, so you gotta be careful pulling it out. There's your spring. So just be real careful. That's under load, so that's why I'm wearing safety glasses right now. But there's. So now to get, let's see if we can even get this. Now we're just gonna cut it. Let me get something to cut it with. There we go. Now I'll be able to get it out of the housing. All right, so we're gonna pull this out of the top of the housing. Always be careful that the spring stays seated. You don't want that popping out. So we'll get that out. And we're gonna put that off to the side. So let's take a look at here. So we'll end up cleaning that up. Here's the knot. You wanna go into counterclockwise winding and uh, let's undo it. And there's a pin in here too that we need to look at. We've gotta make sure. Oh, that's short. Yeah, I think someone, that's real short. It's 71 and a half inches, so uh, let's see here. You can see, here's the top right there. There's a pin that goes in there. I'm not sure if you can see it. Um, you can see the pin deep down in there. Let me see if I can get a flashlight here. I'm not sure if you can see down in there. Right about there, there's a pin, and that rope's gotta go, when you tie the knot, it's gotta go behind there for the first time. Um, and then uh, later, we'll go on top of it. But uh, it's hard to see on camera, but we will go ahead and pull this out. This is definitely not 71 inches. We're gonna measure it to see what it is. Someone must have cut it short. Uh, that's not even three foot. Yeah, that's that's three foot from what I cut off, and then uh, a little bit that's in the handle. So you're talking about three, three less than three and a half foot. So that's definitely way too short. Uh, so something happened there. So we will. I'm gonna cut a piece off here. We're gonna cut it a little long. Well, we'll cut it 71 and a half. That's an easy way on the end. Let's see where it's going on this thing. I if that's not it. You can never find the end on these things. There you go. Alright. There's one end. So we need about, so that's 71 inches. It's all tangled up, isn't it? Alright. All right, let me measure that, and we'll get right back to you. All right, so uh, we've got our cord cut 71 and a half inches per spec. Now what we're going to do is melt the ends. This is nylon, so it's got some plastic in it. In it. You don't want to make it uh, a ball. You just want to make it so it doesn't fray, because you want to be able to run the cord through the hole nicely. So that's perfect. Right there. There you go. Perfect. So now I'm going to go clean this up real quick. And then uh, we will uh, reassemble it. Alright, so we're going to stick our cord into the hole where that knot was. And we're going to use my pointing device to feed it through. It's very tight. Now we got to make sure we got to stay behind the pin starting out. So. It's not pushing through here. Come on. There you go. Got it behind that pin is what the it's tight. So now I can just poke it through on this side. I can't see. So now I just gotta poke it through and pull it through like that. So now we've got our cord that we're gonna wrap around counterclockwise here. We gotta put a knot at the end of this too. 
Let me just do. I think an overhand knot would be good enough. It's pretty thick. Let's see what happens. There you go. Yeah, overhand knot was fine. So we got the rope going through the hole behind the pin right here. And then we're just going to wrap it around counterclockwise. Like that. There you go. Now let's go get the spring back and we'll feed it through. Alright, so we've got our pin here. We need to get it back into the spring right here. So we can see the pin mark up here. We just got to set it. down on there. This is the tricky part here. feeding the line through here just like that all right let's put it back reassemble it all right before I forget I'm going to send the line through here so you don't have any issues um, here is the put that back in there I see an arrow on here you're supposed to line these up there's a marking right there see the little bracket right there you see the arrow here you're supposed to that's supposed to be lined up because this is the pool is timed to top dead center top bottom bottom center depending on when uh, which stroke you're on so I'm gonna line up those arrows uh, so we got an arrow here we've got our bracket here you can see indented and then we got an arrow over there so that's all lined up and we're gonna Attach the screw. Got the washer, lock washer, and the bolt. I'm gonna screw that down, and that should hold it. I'm hoping. That's and that's the torque spec right there, hand tight. All right, yeah, that's holding it. So it's all lined up just right. So that's perfect. Perfect. All right, let's get the handle back on there. Let's take a look here. Let's see what's going on with this handle. It's probably going to fall apart. This rubber is completely dead. I don't think there's any saving it. But we will for now. Yeah, it's completely gone. The aluminum on the inside's all right. Let me go clean that up a little bit. Nope, that's not working. Alright, so we're just going to have to leave it off. We'll just run it through here. And we'll leave it off for right now. We'll just have to get a new, we'll just get a new handle later. Run it through the maze. Maybe we can find one off of old lawnmower or something like that. We don't need to go back with, that looked pretty close, huh? All right, so we'll leave that for right now. And we need to tie a knot on the end of it too, if it doesn't slip through. That all came out, we'll, we'll figure it, we'll get it going in a minute. So 71 and a half inches, that's how long a rope you need. That's not what was in there. All right, let's put her back on top. Oh, wait, before we do that, I almost forgot. We gotta put the retaining clip back on. There you 
we go. Oops. Let me just show his clip. Now let's try again. There you go. Just like that. There you go. Put the e-clip back on. Without poking ourselves. So we just put the e-clip back on here. So let's go mount it back onto the top of the motor. Alright, so we got that all put back together. We will set this. Our arrows are all lined up. Perfect. Set that right there. And we'll put our three screws back in here. Alright. We're just going to test the pull start. We are not actually going to turn it on. We just want to see what it looks like. So let me reposition everything here. We'll see how that does. Much better. It was a lot tighter. Now it's a lot better. I feel I have compression on there. So, let's see here. Well, thanks for watching the teardown and rebuild of the pull start on our motor. We're going to have other videos coming up. We're going to test the ignition system and go from there. We're going to get this motor running one way or the other. So, stick around and watch out for new videos. And again, if you haven't seen the wooden boat build out of two pieces of plywood, check that out too.